So I took a piece of round stock here and uh, threaded it up to match the uh, breech threads, breech plug threads. And this will give me something to uh, seat this into and be able to clamp onto in my mill vise. And I uh, won't have to worry about messing up the threads that way. And I took a little uh, cold blue and uh, cold blued this and then did some quick layout lines. And what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to cut this down in my mill and start making the hook for the hook breech. So after a couple different positionings in the mill and a couple different sizes of end mills, there we have it. Nice hooked breech. The bottom side of this really isn't that important because it's just clearance. For when the hook goes in, it gives it clearance to rotate in. But uh, the top side up here is kind of important because uh, this side will have to be fitted to match the tang and it'll have to lock in pretty tight once it seats down in there. So. It uh, doesn't have to be like super, you know, pressure tight, but it needs to be tight so that it doesn't uh, rattle or move. So when I do the fit up to the tang, when I make that part, this uh, section here will be hand fitted to match the tang on each one. But that's it. Now I just have three more of these to do, basically. One just exactly like this one, and then the other two that uh, are the other side of the other barrels with the larger breech plugs. Breech plugs. So. But that's how it done, is done, and that's what it looks like when it's finished. At this point, if I was doing uh, flintlock double rifles, I'd come in and I'd machine a flat in here at a slight angle, and that's called a recess breech, and that allows you to have a narrower width through the wrist section because it actually tips the locks in a little bit, moves them a little farther to center line, gives you a thinner wrist doing it that way. But since this is going to be a cap lock, what I'll have to do is I'll have to come in and machine a flat that comes in and insets and uh, drill and tap for the nipple. So, But I got three more of these to do before I can get to that part. So a little before and after shot here. This is the other set of barrels that I haven't cut yet for the hooks. And then there's the finished set of hooks. And uh, you can see that there's still a lot of material here. It's going to have to be taken off. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll uh, go ahead and make the hooks on this set here. And then uh, when I'm done with that, I'm going to start removing all this material around the edges here. Get rid of that extra, make it round. And uh, I'll cut it off on each side to where the rib edge is going to be for when I solder the rib on later. And uh, that'll be both top and bottom ridge is where it's going to get cut off at. And I'm going to leave it a little long so that I can file it back right to the edge of the rib and make everything as seamless as I possibly can this way. But uh, So those are the next steps. Is uh, i got to make this set of barrels match this set of hooks. And then I'll start uh, removing all this extra material on the offside block there, on the breech block there. So that's where we're at, and that's what I'll be doing next. So you can see that this is all round now, and the way I did that was uh, I had used my mill to knock the corners off the square. I just step milled it in there, and then I took a file and I draw filed it until it matched the contour of the barrel. And I uh, know how well you can really see this, but uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of file mark here that will have to be cleaned up and polished down. That's one of the reasons I didn't worry about polishing the barrels up when I was first turning them. Next thing I did was, since I had everything shaped and contoured properly, was uh, put it all together, got it all lined up to where the hooks are all perfectly lined up, everything's in line the way it's supposed to be, and I used some uh, pipe clamps to uh, hold it together. Once I got everything positioned with pipe clamps and some wedges to hold everything spaced out properly, then I silver soldered a couple inches of the breech together, about two and a half, three inches here, top and bottom are silver soldered. And the silver solder I used is uh, it's uh, actual silver brazing rod, 45% silver. Um, stuff takes a lot of heat to uh, get it to flow, and you got to use the proper flux, and I mix my own to get it to actually bond properly. And the real secret to soldering is clean it, clean it, and clean it some more. And when you think you've got it clean, clean it again, because that's the biggest problem most people have with soldering is they don't clean their metal up before they start. And then the next thing you do is, uh, after you've got your metal clean, is flux it properly with the right flux to go with the solder you're going to use. 
And then in the case of silver solder or any kind of brazing rod, you got to put the heat to it and get it to flow properly. Uh, unlike a lot of other solders, um, silver solder and and brazing type solders, brass brazing, that kind of thing, you got to have a lot of heat to get them to flow. And that's not a bad thing in this deal though. Um, it does take a lot of heat to get that kind of solder to flow. But there's a reason I use this. Um, one reason is is because this stuff has unbelievable bonding strength once it sets. The other part of it is is when I go to put the ribs and stuff on here, I'll be soldering again, and I'll be able to use a lower temperature solder to put those on, and I won't have to worry about that coming apart at the breeches while I'm putting the ribs and stuff on. So using a very high temp silver solder or a high temp brazing type setup allows you to make sure that you're not going to worry about that separating later when you're soldering all the other stuff on here. So I'll clean this up top and bottom and uh, I'll show you again here in a second after I've got it cleaned up what it looks like. My silver soldering jobs aren't very pretty but they are effective and they do hold solid so I'll show you that in a second. So you can see it's cleaned up now. Um, like I said my uh, silver brazing isn't very pretty but uh, you can see I got a good tie in on the edges. Everything flowed really nice. Um, really ties these together and like I said I did this top and bottom so it's it's got quite a bit of solder in it and so quite a bit of braze in it and uh, there's about two and a half three inches here the one thing I didn't do you can see that I didn't go all the way back to the end uh, there's a little gap there um, I don't want to run any solder or any braze up into where my um, breeches are because if I do ever have to take them out they won't come out if they're soldered in obviously so leave a little gap there keeps it from uh, preventing the breeches from coming out later if they ever have to um, you can see that uh, that's pretty much the setup for doing these. Like I said previously, if a guy was building this out of, for a flintlock gun, all he'd have to come in and do is uh, make his flats for his uh, uh, recesses to get his locks to narrow up a little bit, and he could have his breeches done right at this point for a flintlock gun. Um, for a cap lock gun, obviously, I've got to come in and I'll cut the uh, flats in and drill and tap for the nipples. So that's left to do. Um, this not being the prettiest job in the world really isn't that big of a concern for me because the uh, rib when it's all put on there will do a very good job of covering it up and the solder joint I'll put on this it'll look perfect when it's all cleaned up so that works pretty good uh, you can see the shaping is done on this one so basically that's the gist of it for this week um, I do have the other set of barrels to do yet they're still square and so I've got to taper, I've got to knock off all the corners and shape them out just like I did this one to give those nice round breeches. And uh, that'll cover the rest of the week pretty much. So uh, really not much else I can show you because I'm going to finish up my week by finishing up that, set of, that other set of barrels and uh, getting them soldered together. So that's how this part's done. I'll uh, move around back here so you can see it a little better from the end hopefully. You can see how it looks when it's all tied together there. And uh, this top rib, of course, will be tied in. You know, the sides will come in and they'll be lined up perfectly with the top rib. And this bottom flat here, when it's all done, it'll be actually be uh, shaped out to match the contour of the bottom rib for the ramrod. So that's what it's going to look like, though. And uh, you can see how the two separate breeches work. If you ever have to unbreach this thing, you can take this one out back it out and that allows this one to un unscrew so pretty much the way a hooked breech is done on a double rifle